Okay, so I'll do roll call. Um, Crawford Carpenter. Present. Nicole Green. Sorry, I could not mute. Present. Ozzie Carter. Present. Scott Parsons. Present. Reverend Julius Van Hook. Present. Rena Moore. Present. Brenda Lee. Present. Latanya Thompson. Present. Justin Van Zerber. Present. And Evan Decker. Present. Uh, Ten board members are present. Who have quorum? Thank you. Sounds good. Let's move then, first of all, to welcome you. And we'll make this short. Welcome. We are CAB, the Community Advisory Board. Uh, you'll be uh, listening in as well as participating in day two of our annual retreat. We've already had our introductions. We've, uh, pardon me, yeah, our introductions. Since we have a small group, why don't we have introductions for the others that are not board members who are on the call? Um, okay, so I'll start with staff. Um, Patrice Gillery. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again. Patrice Gillery here from the Office of Reentry and Justice. And I'm Monique Tate with the Office of Reentry and Justice. I'm Jill Ray. Hi there, Jill Ray with um, Office of Supervisor Candace Anderson. Okay, and then we have um, John Dante. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, yes, I have uh, recovery homes uh, trying to help people with uh, drug and or alcohol recovery. And Lila Blanchard. Hello, everybody. My name is Lila Blanchard, and I work for Rubicon Programs, and I just finished a three-year board term, and I'll be assisting a little bit here and there with the retreat today. Um, welcome, and it's great to see everyone today. And I don't see anyone else on the call, Crawford. Okay, thank you. Are there any announcements? Uh, first from the board members. Uh, Lila, you, you can't let us down here. Or any announcements from other than board members? Actually, I have one announcement. Yeah. I uh, just wanted to share uh, with those of you, I think, I believe I may have uh, referenced Measure X yesterday. Um, and um, I know that health, housing and homeless services H3 recently released a, a RFP, otherwise known as a request for proposals um, for innovative housing um, projects and programs um, to be administered in the county. Uh, we did send that around to our contact list to be sure that con our, our providers are aware of that, but just wanted to share that with all of you, that there is a round of funding um, that is going to be made available for some additional housing uh, resources in the county. Thank you, Patrice. Crawford, I can go ahead and put the Zoom link information to our stepping stone ceremony that we'll be having in a couple weeks. Um, that's where three of our sites from Concord, Richmond, and Antioch um, come together to celebrate folks who are completing um, workshops either in person or remotely by Zoom. Um, so I'll put that um, date in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you, Lila, you didn't let me down. Thank you. All right then, is there any public comment on any item that's under the jurisdiction of CAB yet not on our agenda? Uh, do you see any raised hands, Monique? I do not. All right, then we'll move on then. Again, now let's set the table for board members and for those in the audience with some housekeeping items prior to resuming our retreat. For those in the public, please keep your participation on mute or until called upon by raising your hand. For those of you who are CAB members, this is an interactive process. So please, please chime in after the various speakers have finished their thoughts. And for those of you on the phone, kindly use star six to mute, star six again to unmute. 
As usual, we'll hear comments first from our board members and then from the public by raising your hand. Now moving to day two overview, slide three, please. Uh, Lenita is here now, um, Crawford. Wonderful, hello, Lenita. Okay, uh, moving now to day two. Okay. Which will be slide three. Thank you. This is gonna be our meeting overview. And today we'll attempt to build upon our efforts from yesterday, where we attempted to lay the foundation for CAB. Please keep in mind that this is a great deal of information. It'll take some time for you to absorb it. So please ask questions. We'll touch on yesterday's highlights, which were history and workings of CAB and its standing committees, AB 109 and its associated funding legislative intent, and the Office of Reentry and Justice Reinvestment. The last two items that I mentioned, by the way, again, we tip our hat to you, uh, Patrice. Excellent, excellent comments. And then also yesterday, we had a snapshot of the CC, CCP budget and its associated requests. Moving now to today's highlights, which will be touching again on CAB's purpose and functions. It'll be a brief review. We'll also review CAB's past accomplishments. We'll touch on subcommittee formulation, and we'll also have a Hopeful, hopefully a vote for our secretary as well as subcommittee selections. Slide four, please. And Lila, the show is yours. Great. So um, we recapped, um, excuse me, yesterday we covered quite a bit and we also covered um, the 23-24 CCP budget. Um, and the CCP, if you'll remember, is the committee that comes after CAB. Um, and then that budget gets sent to the PPC for approval. Um, we also reviewed CAB AB 109 community programs budget proposal. And, um, and those were some other items that we Covered. I uh, just want to do a quick check and see if there were any questions regarding these topics covered um, yesterday. All right, I'm going to hand it back to you, Crawford. Well, thank you, Lila. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Today, we decided, or the team did, that put these presentations together. Your team felt we should again touch on this important item, that is the purpose and functions of CAB. To begin, are there questions that you might have or are there clarifications that we, the staff, might provide? If not, I will just cover the highlights of the six key components of our purpose and functions. Let me stop for a moment. Are there any questions first? Okay, seeing no questions, we're gonna start and I'll just review quickly. Again, I indicated there are six key components of purchase of purpose and functions. Component one, address the big picture. And that'll be of the criminal justice in our county. Component number two, advance justice reinvestment. We hope we can do this by holding county officials accountable. Component number three, we would like to provide policy and budget advocacy. And we'll do this by fostering the expansion of services. Component number four, we want to protect community investments. And we feel we can do this by increasing our investments with CBOs. 
component number five. Um, are we on the next slide, uh, Monique? Yes, so we okay. have, um, once you read the components, um, then you will go into the uh, discussion questions. Okay, um, component number five was to serve as a watchdog, and I prefer the word spotlight, by challenging AB 109 budgets. Our final component is to gather information. This is component number six and communicate that information while engaging with our community and the community at large. We'll do this by building relationships with key decision makers. Kindly note the questions on the side to nudge your thought process. Again, are there any questions or comments regarding the purpose and functions of CAF? None being then, let's move to slide number eight. And we'll start with, who is the first one there? Or is it slide nine? You can go to slide nine, please. Uh, Scott, why don't we start with Scott, then Nicole, then Lila. And that should cover our three uh, standing committees. Scott? Scott, you're on mute. All right. And that completes my presentation. Oh, <laughs> <that's true. laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so yesterday, we pretty clearly outlined um, that outreach and community engagement had two major functions. And that was membership cultivation and community outreach. And you'll see in the notes there um, that, you know, we established the ambassador guide to assist the cab. I'm going to go uh, into some length on that a little bit later, but that was a work that everyone was involved in, and particularly uh, Crawford and I laboring over some rewrite to make the ambassador program make more sense and be less intimidating. Um, provide orientation training on the new ambassador toolkit. We, we did that and uh, it was well received. Um, updated the promotional and educational materials. And so I really want to uh, commend uh, Patrice and Monique on, on this one. There was a major rewrite there that um, I think had really beneficial effect on the cab. And that's because of the great group of people that are on this call right now that have joined us and are new members. Um, we increased uh, outreach and, and that certainly helped us to recruit in West County. Um, and um, I did a presentation with Lammer and the Sunrise Rotary to raise awareness about CAB's mission. And that was a real eye opener to me because there are so many good people that don't really understand all the dynamics around what we're involved in. And um, it helped to educate them. And what happened as a result is, is we've started a scholarship program for um, incarcerated people that are re-entering and have an interest in attending um, Diablo Valley College. Um, so that kind of, encapsulates those accomplishments for 22. And later on, I'll be speaking more, of course, about our work plan and the ambassador program. Okay, next up, uh, Nicole. Maybe. Me. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, I will take the baton. We'll talk about AB 109 budget and policy um, recommendation, our accomplishments and activities. So um, last year was my first year as being part of the budget and policy um, subcommittee. And I could definitely tell you I've learned a lot. <laughs> um, and it was quite fun. Um, some of the accomplishments, um, um, the first one is we received, um, we worked 
closely with programs and services subcommittee. Um, and one of our recommendations was around a 5% COLA. So we received CCP approval for CAB's request of a 5% COLA increase to be applied to AB 109 community programs for fiscal year 23 and 24, which is big. So I'll do a silent clap for that. Um, the next one is CCP members engaged in a lengthy public uh, discussion uh, during our November 2022 meeting. Um, if you missed that meeting, I would definitely, if, if you're able to replay it, it was a great meeting um, to have uh, CCP members and the community participate in that discussion regarding our recommendations. Um, and they highlight an interest in forming working groups to make forward progress. Uh, we'll talk about more in reference to what those working groups are a little later on in our presentation, but um, they're extremely important um, in reference to gathering data um, and making budget uh, recommendations um, uh, for our, um, our funding. So you'll hear more about that a little bit later. Um, members submitted additional recommendations to the CAO's office for spending down AB 109 excess funds by highlighting the need for increased funding in housing, behavioral health, employment, and pre-release engagement. Um, I would definitely like to say thank you to Crawford and Lila because uh, information was put together so uh, beautifully that we were able to um, have a great discussion um, on the call to talk, to talk to providers about probably where excess fund could be used to help in those areas that we recommended around housing, employment, and so on. Um, also held ambassador meeting with CCP members and boss members offices to uh, present on policy recommendations. So that's our highlights from 2022. And I will pass the baton over to Lila. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Um, thanks everybody for again, joining and for listening. Um, so some um, continuation of the accomplishments and activities from last year were identifying areas of need. Um, so we received presentations from CBOs and county departments to learn about the statuses of contracted reentry services. Um, and there are a variety of different presentations and that's definitely an activity that will continue with the CAB. So if there is an organization that you think uh, could do a presentation or it would be helpful for everyone on the CAB to have an understanding from that department or organization. Um, the ORJ is really helpful for um, providing that information. I also, um, I just want to give a shout out to Jill Ray, who is on um, like every call that we ever have and provides clarification and information and help on so many different things. So thank you, Jill, um, for, yeah, supporting us as you um, do your great work um, for the supervisor. Um, the second point here that you'll see on the slide is supporting the administration of a survey to gather feedback from funded agencies on system gaps and needs for services. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, when uh, giving a little bit of highlight about the work from programs and services, um, we do a survey almost every year. This survey last year um, was um, much easier to read. Their um, ORJ put in a significant amount of information and effort um, to summarize the results of the survey, and that's actually farther down in your packet um, if you want to take a look at that survey. Um, so that, <clears throat> I would say, um, is, is an accomplishment, um, and it really bolstered um, you know, our policy recommendations because there was a direct link with many of the things that were suggested um, in the survey in our policy recommendations. Um, I would just like to add that, um, you know, there are always going to be areas um, to grow in um, and you know, each committee will have space um, to take a look at lessons learned from the prior committee um, and really look to build on the work from the prior year. Uh, next slide, please. Great, so additional accomplishments. Um, does anybody uh, on the call want to call out an additional accomplishment that they feel was noteworthy from um, the Outreach and Community Engagement Committee 
um, programs and services committee, um, and these are all subcommittees, and for policy and budget committee. I think one highlight for me was we um, got involved with budget uh, discussions around um, a significant amount of AB 109 funding that's been going to Stand Together Contra Costa County. Um, and they were asking for more money. Um, and the work that they do is really wonderful, um, but it doesn't serve folks in AB 109 directly. And so um, that uh, conversation was held at the board level and um, the additional increase um, request was not granted because it didn't line up with the purpose of AB 109 funding. Um, I, I would say that was a, a highlight and something that stood out to me. Um, what stood out from last year from anyone else? Or what stands out to you now? Uh, go ahead, Jill. Well, I was just going to add to what you just said. Not only did the increase um, not be, was not given, but also all funding from AB 109 um, that was going to stand together is no longer uh, funding that program at all. And so uh, the public defender was able to um, take that funding and put it toward their other programming that is more directly related to um, keeping individuals out of jail as well as um, helping them with reentry. So that was a huge win for you guys as well. Thank you, Jill. That was beautiful. And thank you for highlighting that piece as well. Um, I see another hand. Go ahead, Nicole. Um, for me, for the policy and budget committee, one of the uh, things that stood out for me for last year was how we dug deep um, in reference to all the to the additional programs and inviting um, H3, um, AODS, um, really looking at those uh, organizations that, that work closely with our recommendations to get more information on how they function inside um, for us as CAP to better um, make suggestions in reference to program and services or even uh, uh, budget our policy um, recommendations so you don't get that often to really talk to you know to the programs in that manner so that was nice um, to be able to do that and as, as well as like we owe and have them all come to our meetings and uh, talk about their programs thank you so much Nicole for providing that additional level of detail of some of the presentations for housing providers for um, AODS and also for WIOA or the workforce um, Innovation and Opportunity Act. Um, Patrice, go ahead. Um, hi, though not a CAP member, um, uh, certainly in support of um, the work that you all do, I did want to highlight um, that last year um, we lost uh, two CAP members who um, had untimely um, um, passed away, but it, while they were here with us, they certainly lifted up, I think, issue areas that are or were um, a little relatively newer to CAB's work, particularly in, in the individuals I'm speaking of are D uh, Dale Harrington um, and Dr. Hernandez, both of whom cared uh, deeply, not only around the work of uh, justice reform and um, in reentry, but with a specific emphasis on individuals with um, a variety of disabilities that are also justice involved, and that that population often um, is, um, or at least at this point in time, not enough directed services or attention is going to that area. So they certainly lifted um, that particular issue up, as well as uh, racial equity and inclusion. And um, uh, Dale Harrington in particular um, attended quite a few other countywide um, advisory bodies. Um, and so that, again, that cross engagement um, was certainly noted and appreciated as he brought back a lot of information um, to this body. So um, just in remembrance of them, certainly want to lift up their work and how that certainly further and help advance um, more knowledge building for this body. Thank you so much, Patrice. It's really important to remember them and um, lift up those um, great contributions that they made. Thank you. 
Um, another accomplishment that stands out to me was um, touched on briefly yesterday, um, but it was about um, really trying to give some particular suggestions um, to service providers to um, request more funding in some of these key areas. So we had brainstormed some ideas about, um, you know, different services that could be offered or expanded that are already existing um, in the areas of housing. And, um, you know, along with disabilities, we spoke quite a bit about co-occurring disorders and folks who maybe have mental health and drug addiction, um, you know, issues that are impacting um, them and their lives and their families. Um, so thank you, um, Patrice, for lifting that one up. Um, are there any surprises from these uh, accomplishments that stand out for folks or the work that needs to be continued? I think this is Evan, and I, uh, I don't know if surprised. Well, I, it's just interesting to hear about the um, the conversation around stand up Contra Costa and how that decision was come to. And um, it's it's good to know that um, this group is looking at um, performance and data and requests in that manner as well. Thank you, Evan. And it was something that was kind of on CAB's radar for a, a few years, like, well, this is kind of outside of the purview for AB 109. And so it was a really big shift. Um, and, and thank you for calling that one out. Um, one more, does anyone else have a surprise or something that's standing out that they'd like to call out at this moment? Yes, actually. Um... Thank you, Lila, for addressing that. I do have a little caveat. Um, one of our primary functions as a board and, and board members, what I like about uh, how uh, Crawford kind of narrowed that down to six independent functions. And the one that was really surprising for me was number five. And for me, um, advocacy, for things that I'm very passionate about. And I would like to encourage our, our new board members that if there's something that you're passionate about, let your voice speak that and to actually to be comfortable and learning how to be comfortable to go into spaces where I call it in, in areas of the unknown. And I'm speaking in reference to the actual uh, Board of Supervisors meeting where uh, stand together, and the public defenders were asking for more monies that were not related to AB 109 funding. I'd never spoken before Board of Supervisors, but I utilized that opportunity because I have become, I'm gonna use our new um, verbiage uh, that's coined so perfectly spotlight. And I took that upon myself to be a part of that and to actually speak because I knew that I was passionate about the funding. Uh, fortunately, uh, council member Candace Anderson had already wrapped everything up in a neat package, but because I sat there in the query and the, I wanted to still go up and voice my opinion as a formerly incarcerated um, woman who had dealt with the um, inequalities in our justice system and the prison industrial complex and to really be that voice and carry that message that we need more monies for AB 109 because there's so many resources and we can never do mm -hmm. enough. But I want to encourage our new members, whatever you're passionate about, to take a stand and be that voice. Wow, Ozzy. Maybe we should close the meeting right now. That was um, <laughs> so impactful. And yes, 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 yes. Um, thank you, Ozzy, for your advocacy. And yes, for, for bringing up that you were at that meeting and, and participating in that and how um, 
how that was for you to step into that and encouraging um, other folks to do the same. Thank you so much, Ozzy. Um, let's take Scott's hand and then we'll take a look at this last question here and then I'll pass it back over to Crawford. Go ahead, Scott. Okay, so surprise um, in, in the discovery in the last year, I was elated when we had a presentation and I saw programs and services supporting um, our public defender and her program called Holistic Intervention Partnership. Mm -hmm. um, I spent so many years um, dealing with our system and feeling empty handed in that um, immediacy of when a person came into our custody, right? And had mental health issues and had financial issues and others. To see a program that early intervention in representation mm -hmm. um, was exciting, I think for uh, everyone in the system. And it was a great um, example of the public defender and the sheriff mm -hmm. and police chiefs working together. Mm -hmm. Scott, thank you so much for highlighting that. That has been wonderful to see that program happen and grow. I bet Jill would know the timeline of you know, and the details of how many um, folks are you know in that partnership um, and how many officers um, or exactly how that works. See, I'm already tripping over my words, but thank you for sharing that and lifting that up, Scott. And a real world example of money is going towards, you know, services for folks who desperately need them. Right. Um, okay, so the last question here Lila, is, oh, excuse yes. me. I have uh -huh. one other thing I'd like to interject. Mm -hmm. um, I was very appreciative of another presentation provided by Janet Eyre, the um, Neighborhood Restorative Partnership, mm -hmm. which was facilitated and started by the district attorney's office where um, low level youthful offenders have an option to appear before panelists of three individuals, a type of diversion. Um, there's actually a third cohort being formed as we speak. I completed the second cohort and will be sitting on um, panel, a panel hopefully in February because uh, the panel that I was going to sit on on the 17th the young person actually uh, absconded. And so I'm having to wait, but I'm very excited about it, having an opportunity to hopefully deter and prevent some recidivism and give other options to young people so that they don't have that record that kind of like criminalizes them for the rest of their lives. Mm. And that's Neighborhood Restorative Partnership, NPR. Wait. In RP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ozzy, for lifting that up and reminding us of that presentation and that you've already jumped in and gotten trained and are speaking highly of that um, partnership and program. That's wonderful. Um, so I'm not quite sure um, how much time we have for this portion. Um, Crawford, do we have time for a couple of folks to respond to the last question? Yes, we do. Please proceed, Lila. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, this last question here is, um, after learning about CAB's previous work, what future actions should CAB take on? Um, so we've heard a lot of accomplishments, um, a number of presentations, programs that are happening now and being lifted up like um, HIP from Scott, and then um, the Neighborhood Restorative Project um, from Ozzy, um, as well as other presentations, um, you know, that Nicole has lifted up in the area of, of housing and AODS. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave some space for folks to raise their hand or come off mute. Um, we can start with folks on the board and then move to just anyone. And thank you, Patrice, for putting in the chat the DA's Neighborhood Restorative Partnership Program there that Ozzy just referenced. Okay. All 
All right, does anybody have a thought that's coming to mind about future actions that you'd be excited to see the CAP take on? Uh, yes, I'll go first. Um, future actions I would like to see CAP take on is to continue our work in the recommendations. I really, I'm excited about 2023. I really want to see some of our recommendations implemented. Um, I really want to see um, changes in reference to those key areas like um, housing, um, employment, especially behavioral health. Um, I, I, we have new people here. I want us all to be vocal and, you know, speak, you know, just really hopefully by the end of this year, we can say that some of those accomplishments are now in place. And um, I think we've all put a lot of um, hard work previously into this. And that's one of the future actions I'd like to see that we take on this year is really follow up on those items and hopefully get them implemented this year or somewhere. In implemented. <laughs> uh, Justin, your hand is up. Yeah, just kind of piggybacking off of that. I think I heard a lot of uh, great work about collaborating with different departments and different community organizations uh, to learn where the gaps are and how funding can help support uh, the work that they are all doing. So I think continuing to drive that momentum forward, uh, continuing to learn from those different departments and organizations uh, and had that completely influence the work that we're doing uh, as a group. Thank you, Justin, and thank you so much, Nicole. Um, anybody else have a comment that they'd like to make about um, future actions that you'd like to see CAB take on or that you can imagine CAB taking on? All right, and I, um, Justin, you don't have another comment, do you? Okay. Yeah, and I, I just want to affirm, you know, folks who are in observation mode and listening mode, um, you know, it might take a few meetings before, you know, you want to jump in and, and, and share something. And that um, is a great approach as well. There's a whole lot that's being shared and um, everybody will have time, you know, to, to speak out and to speak up and, um, and to share more. So thank you everybody for this conversation and discussion. And I'm gonna pass this back over to Crawford. Thank you, Lila. Uh, could you please go to slide 12? Thank you, thanks, Monique. Okay, here we're gonna deal with a few items here, policy recommendations, as well as our ambassador talking points, which are part of our ambassador toolkit. So that leads us to the first item here on our agenda, which will be the policy recommendations. Nicole, could you maybe chat a little bit about that with us? Yes, I definitely can. Um, it's um, in the agenda item, it's on uh, attachment four on page 41 through 44. Um, do we want to go ahead and put those up or I can kind of just go through them, Monique? Whichever is... Maybe helpful to put those up. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Monique. Patrice, do you want to share it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm um, very excited about going over um, our recommendations um, from last year. So scroll down a little bit. So we'll start with recommendation number one. So our first re um, recommendation was to continue investing into housing services by expanding the pool of reentry um, Pacific housing. Um, this, some of these recommendations did, um, excuse me, did co come over from the previous year. Um, however, um, this year we kind of dig deeper into this recommendation number one um, in reference to wanting to establish some work groups, as, as I mentioned before, we'll talk about a little bit later, but really focusing on how COVID um, impacted um, the population and the need for additional housing support um, for the reentry population um, around motels, you know, outside of just the regular transitional housing and that's a leaves that's available. Um, so that was recommendation number one. Let's mm -hmm. go down a little bit. Uh, Nicole, you can add? I add one, yeah, can I add one more thing? Oh, yeah. Context? Um, so um, another reason why this was a, a 
pretty important recommendation for CAB is because the existing pool of housing, at least um, at the time, the way in which it was designed was um, primarily transitional housing through uh, your sober living environments. And though that is a key component for individuals who are in the process of, um, or going through their recovery process, especially for those who are exiting um, our um, uh, substance use disorder, residential treatment programs, things of that nature. We also found that there were other individuals within the reentry population um, where that particular um, program model did not meet their needs or, or in, and did not fit their preference for housing options. So um, this was another element to lift up that there's a need for other reentry housing options that could best meet the needs and the preferences of the diverse group of reentry population. There was also um, a call for um, improving how we streamline individuals transitioning from jail to community by providing them immediate housing um, upon release. At the moment, the only housing that's available for individuals immediately released from our local jails is essentially our shelter beds. And during COVID, um, that was a little bit difficult to access, as you can imagine, with uh, communal living um, being um, heavily restricted um, due to the pandemic for obvious reasons. So those are some of the additional elements of uh, wanting to see an expansion of um, housing options for the reentry population that um, CAP looked at. And to, to piggyback off of Patrice, um, this is one of the reasons that we um, are recommending for work groups to be able to work with those programs that focus on housing to try to put our, our heads together for this year. Um, on how to provide better services for this population, because right now the percentage of individuals that are released from jail right now are homeless. Um, there is a high number of individuals that unfortunately either they don't make it to a shelter bag or they're walking out of the jail uh, without any housing um, or any pre-release services. So there is a major need for some other additional type of housing. And thank you, Patrice, for adding that piece. I was gonna do a quick run through. <laughs> So I'll go in more depth, but um, um, yes, there is a significant need. So I'm very excited about recommendation number one. Um, another highlight for that section was, um, before I move on, was looking deep into like the behavioral health around the mental health and AOD, as well as our current housing programs, such as um, um, H3. Um, so yeah, that's recommendation. Thank you, Patrice, recommendation number one. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll just keep it straight and short. <laughs> you have to nudge me. You have to nudge me. <laughs> so recommendation number two. Um, okay. So recommendation number two was to expand the use of alternatives to incarceration, inclusion, diversion, and restorative justice programs, and ensure equity access to these programs. So um, CAB, we can read through this. CAB recognizes the significance of improving our local justice systems and reducing incarceration. Um, I know programs and services really focused on the re, um, the recidivism, excuse me, recidivism rate and uh, restorative justice part of their subcommittee, which was awesome uh, when I uh, worked with, um, with Lila. And Lila, you could definitely add some to this if you like, because um, I would definitely say I don't do it any justice compared to how Lila uh, talks about restorative justice. So I will give her that, <laughs> that baton. But um, some of the key highlights in here, so I don't read it verbatim, um, Let's see here. We recognize, of course, some opportunities um, to correct and receive access to um, uh, critical resources um, within the criminal justice system. I mean, it's it. so the whole goal is, again, um, is trying to prevent individuals from returning in custody. So we definitely want to look and make sure that those services and that individuals have direct access to that um, so that it can prevent them from coming back um, and making sure that those uh, programs are available to them. Go down to the next one. Anyone want to add anything that I didn't highlight before I move on? No? One additional you, piece. I say you that, can jump in anytime. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one, one additional thing that I do want to um, uh, expound upon is that um, certainly programs and services subcommittee did a lot of work in, in this area of restorative justice. And when I say a lot of work, just to be very um, specific about it, um, 
they took the opportunity to do some research around restorative justice, what it means and what other ways is, um, is restorative justice applied. So you have certain policies, you have restorative practices that can be implemented. And then, and then you also have full scale programs that can be developed as well. And um, as CAB was moving forward to um, recommend um, that more um, focus be given to this by way of uh, through the CCP, then the probation department received Measure X funding to launch a restorative justice initiative. So um, we are still in the process of putting all the pieces together. Uh, we will be launching, as I mentioned yesterday, launching an RFQ to bring on board a project manager and um, begin developing a needs assessment to look at across our system, where are um, restorative justice programs or and or practices being implemented and then where are opportunities where we can fill in the gaps to make it more real and embedded within our justice system and we anticipate having a steering committee and and or a work group that will help steer this project and we um, are leaving a seat or two available to for cab representation given that this was such an important um, piece of the work that um, you all lifted up. So for any of the new members that are interested in that, um, I'll certainly um, happy and welcome to um, uh, 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 make space for you guys on that on that committee. And I'll just add a quick little piece to that if that's okay, Nicole. Um, yeah, thank you for um, giving more um, helpful information, Patrice. Um, it was probably over like two years um, or three years that the Programs and Services Subcommittee was taking a look at restorative justice. There was a white paper that was given that, that actually suggested there that there be a committee to focus on this or, you know, um, that the subject matter experts could be called upon and um, more space be created um, within the county structures um, to focus on this. Um, and another thing that came up was um, a board member from last year um, gave a really great presentation about San Francisco and their reentry system and that they have restorative justice circles that they actually do in their facilities. Um, so the, there's much work to be done and a lot more to explore in this area. Um, and yeah, one of the potential ways that this could go is offering, um, you know, restorative justice circles. Um, and like Patrice said, there's going to be exploration of, you know, is it policy program or both um, in this? And I'm sorry, Thank one you. more, one more very last thing on this. Um, there was also great concern um, among CAB uh, to be sure that programs, whether it's a diversionary program, which have been, I would say, um, over the last few years, bubbling up more and more in our county, and as well as restorative justice programs, um, to ensure that there's equitable access to those um, efforts as a way to address um, racial disparities um, in, our, in our justice system. So that was something that CAB lifted up and felt that it was really imperative that if the county moves forward to expand diversion and restorative justice, or at least the implementation of, rest, of restorative practices, that there be an eye to um, racial equity and inclusion uh, in access and also in outcomes of these sort of programs. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else want to add? I appreciate both of you. Thank you so much for adding that additional detail um, for the recommendation. And let me see if there's any more. Okay, um, moving to the next one. And we are at uh, recommendation number three, um, which is to ensure our reentry programs and services are adaptable to a racial, excuse me, a racial equity lens, are trauma informed, and are culturally competent and responsive to the communities being served. So, um, with this one, CAB, you know, focus their attention on making sure that AB 109 funded programs and services. Um, are, are given uh, the greater um, attention in that our programs and services demonstrate racial inclusion and equity and are responsive to the population's trauma history and, of course, their background. Um, 
part of our recommendations uh, was encouraging CCP to make sure, that, not to make sure, but encouraging people, CCP to have discussion um, around this area um, on how, and to determine how this can be done in conjunction with the work of the Racial Justice Oversight Body and the creation of the Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice. Um, does anyone want to add, Patrice, do you want to add anything to this from RJ standpoint? Sure. The last thing I would just mention on this is um, uh, kind of to what Crawford shared um, yesterday about one of CAP's functions, um, uh, which is to spotlight um, certain um, issues or areas that are coming up that are of concern to CAP. Uh, the racial justice and equity um, piece, though being heavily talked about and explored through the racial justice oversight body. Um, I think this is an area where CAB will continue to pay attention to. So the office, just for newer folks, the Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice um, has been approved to be created where things are stand, or things stand, or at least the recommendations to create the office have been um, accepted where things stand now is to um, talk through or deliberate its staffing plan, um, salaries that go along with it and other things that need to be teased out with regards to um, the office's um, functions and um, duties. So um, I can, once I stop sharing screen, I can share around with you all the recommendations that were presented to the Board of Supervisors. I wanna say that was back in October, November of last year. So you guys can um, get a sense of what's going to happen and take place there. But again, this is uh, just another area where CAP will continue to pay attention to and also ensure that as the office is being developed, that they are as well taking a look of um, um, equity or equitable access to reentry programs and to ensure that support is given um, for programs to be culturally competent and responsive, given the expertise that will come out of that office. I was talking to you all, but I was on mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Patrice. Um, I'll finish with the um, uh, go oh, through the rest. Uh, Nicole, Jill has her hand raised. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Jill. Hi, sorry. I just want to piggyback on that excellent summary that Patrice just gave. Um, two things. Um, the most important thing is that office has been funded. Um, so that's incredibly important so that it, you know, once the uh, positions are established, it can be lifted up. And then the, the second piece of that is that we have been doing this work for a very long time in many different departments. And one of the goals of this office will also be to collaborate across systems, um, best practices, and to talk to each other about what we are doing so that we can ensure that it goes across the entire system. So that that's all I wanted to add. Thanks, Jill. I appreciate that. Um, anything else before I move on? I don't think I see any hands. Okay. Um, do the timing. I'm going to go through the next three um, recommendations, but I do want to make sure I leave time for Scott as well. Um, so uh, recommendation number four, um, and Patrice, if you'd like to add to this, um, you can as well. Um, this one was in, around supporting development of a data strategy coordination by the Office of Reentry and Justice to improve their data collection. Um, there has been, I could say, in 2022, great growth in that department um, around data collection. They have implemented so many different um, changes on um, um, on how they're collecting data. And I know there's been a, a wide change in reference to staffing as well. Um, so there was uh, so the, the goal was improving data, excuse me, in reference to collection, collection, analyze and evaluation of programs and services and the impact of AB 109 funding on the reentry population. Um, Patrice, do you want to add a piece to that in reference to the changes for um, RJ and their data collecting? Yeah, sure. I'd like to say that um, though we have grown quite a bit in our capacity um, to um, provide some evaluation to our contracted service providers, I think in the conversation overall in terms of developing a data strategy that will 
um, help the entire continuum understand what's being done, how well is it being done, and are we getting the uh, biggest bang for our buck? I think it's starting to trick, uh, uh, what's the word for it, uh, starting to move into other departments as well who are looking at ways to be um, more um, data-driven and uh, also establish some performance-based metrics when it comes to their service delivery as well. So um, I think what's going to grow from this, uh, we will continue to do our work. Um, I think I shared earlier uh, yesterday in terms of one of our projects, we've um, providing some support to Supervisor Anderson as she is participating in Familiar Faces, which is an effort that's looking at integrating data across um, healthcare systems and the criminal justice systems. Um, we were visiting um, the Stepping Up Initiative, which was an um, opportunity to do what we call a sequential intercept mapping that looks at it, every decision point across the criminal justice system, what services or programs um, can folks access, particularly for individuals with behavioral health challenges. So any sort of system update or improvement or enhancement um, that is being proposed, no matter where it stems from within the county, there's a great need for data collection, um, quality data collection, and also the infrastructure in place to make it happen, um, to evaluate our effectiveness in, in making um, informed decisions about how funding should be um, allocated um, to, to ultimately meet the outcomes we want to see for this population. So all to say that this is another spotlighted area, if you will, that won't necessarily just reside within ORJ, though we will continue to give you guys updates, but then you'll start to see more of this as well with other departments that have a stake in um, improving the lives of folks that are in reentry. Thank you. Um, and I have to definitely agree with you that this is definitely a spotlight um, working with AB 109 uh, for so many years. The changes that you guys have made to collect that data will actually make um, is, is extremely important and will impact the way that things are being done around programming. So, um, yeah. Anything else? Let me see if I see any. I don't anything else. Thank you, Patrice. Okay, so recommendation number five, um, as you, um, well, and recommendation number six, but um, for recommendation number five, as you heard Patrice mention earlier, um, we had two committee members um, that were part of the CAB, um, and they gave a lot of great insight um, around our recommendations. This one we dedicated to Dr. Hernandez, um, for uh, which focused more on uh, the, the target population around disabilities, and she gave uh, a lot of input around this. So we um, we actually named, and, and, I'll, and if I say the name wrong, Crawford, correct me, but we actually gave her this <laughs> recommendation and named it after her. So I wanted to make sure I highlighted that because that's extremely important important um, because of all the input that she gave. But one of the key things that we realized here was that individuals that are dealing with disabilities or core core disorders, um, there is not enough services for them. So we're asking for um, services to be expanded for them around housing, um, and not just focus on that reentry aspect of it, but everyone that, you know, are, um, that that has been incarcerated, they may suffer from um, different aspects if it's mm -hmm. mental health, or or it could be both. There's there's a lack of services for those individuals um, to be able to support them. So um, housing, employment, or whatever the case may be, um, we're asking for in this recommendation to include um, programs available for individuals with physical and development disabilities. So um, very excited about recommendation number five because it's needed. Um, um, there's, there's, excuse me, it's needed in this, I'm getting caught up in my words, apologize, it's needed, because there are individuals that, yes, they have been incarcerated, but they actually need more assistance around certain areas in order for them to be successful. So that's what this recommendation is focused on. And let's go down to number... Can I add one more thing? Sorry. Just... No, no, go <laughs> ahead, jump in, please. You know, <laughs> if uh, I miss it, you had it. <laughs> Yeah, just to give again further context, um, another reason why this was um, incredibly important to CAB is because, uh, again, the existing set of reentry services um, really highlights oftentimes the importance of providing stable um, housing and then employment opportunities 
um, for individuals to support their reintegration back into the community. The challenge though, with anyone that's experiencing either co-occurring disorder or some form of disability, when they are accessing public benefits such as SSI, um, the, it becomes a conundrum in terms of accessing um, employment or, get, or gaining further income through employment that then could uh, pose a barrier to the benefits that they receive. And so uh, what many providers are left uh, with trying to figure out, and I'm sure Lila can speak to this even more so than I can, um, given her work there um, with Rubicon, um, is that um, that then poses a challenge sometimes even with their housing or sustaining housing uh, for the long term. So they're kind of caught um, in, in this sort of quagmire, if you will, of how do I get the gainful, or how do I receive the income that I need in order to maintain my housing, or how do I find housing that will sustain me for the long term, um, given that um, I'm challenged with um, with uh, uh, with employment, with being able to access any gainful employment, um, oftentimes due to their disability. So. I don't know if you want to expound a little bit more, Lila, on that that experience that a lot of folks in this population have. What I would um, say to that is that um, we get lots of referrals sent to us of folks who are on SSI or SSDI, um, but it is complicated, um, right? Like what's going to happen to their income if they start working and at what point will their um, will all of the benefits disappear? And, you know, we all know how exorbitant the cost of housing is. So mm -hmm. even if folks are, um, you know, do are receiving benefits and do start working part time or full time, you know, at a minimum wage position, it's very difficult for folks to um, pay for housing, um, you know, with that level of income. What we, um, need to do a lot of times is to refer um, folks to um, Ticket to Work, um, which is um, SSI, um, and it's a class where you basically hear the information. What we don't want to do is surprise folks or folks think that they want to go back to work, but then find out, um, you know, that it's they're financially off worse or that it's not financially viable for them at all um, and that it's a very difficult process to reapply sometimes when folks um, lose those benefits um, so yeah that's that's the only thing that I would add is that it it's often um, you know people say I want to go back to work and they do want to go back to work but um, how that needs to be an informed decision for folks understanding what's going to happen to their benefits and and what would happen when? Um, listening to um, both you guys, and thank you. Um, another key thing that 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 stuck out, and being a previous provider in reference to um, housing, uh, Patrice mentioned in reference to the AB one hundred nine funding. And one of the things that um, we have found in reference to coordinating with uh, providers such as Ida with Rubicon was a lot of the individuals, even if it, it, they may not want to go back to work, the way the funding is created right now, there really isn't any, I'm not going to say any assistance, but individuals with disabilities don't really, at this point, to be honest, benefit the way that it's structured. Because of their disabilities, it would take a lot, a little bit longer for them to either get into housing and or services. So the time frame for disability housing through H3 or through the, the program that are out there, there's either a waiting list or it takes a significant time, time frame for them to even be enrolled. So that missing piece of what do we do with them now? How do we help them now um, to be able to be housed or employed? Or like Lila said, you know, you don't want to mess up their, their SSI income. So there is a need to look at this area because major to be honest, majority of the people that come out of here are either dealing with some sort of disability and it's not just always physical, it can be mental as well. But the way that the programs are serviced for reentry does not fit that population. So um, I'm really, really want to see how recommendation five turns around because that was one of the difficult areas that I had as well was how do I help this individual that are dealing with these disabilities majority of the housing programs are not even structured to be able to deal with someone or help someone with that disability so 
as you guys um, made two things pop in my head as I was listening to you too. So thank you very much. Okay, so recommendation number six was to expand county employment opportunities and hiring among justice involved populations. So we wanted to look at what well, we all know that employment is difficult for individuals that um, come out that that have been recently incarcerated. Usually when someone is uh, get gains employment, they don't make enough uh, money to be able to to live. Uh, they don't make a livable wage. And one of the things we wanted to focus on is how to provide an opportunity for those um, to get county jobs or to be able to go in into a career where they can have enough uh, money as well as benefits um, to be able to survive. Um, and again, Lila, this is her area with Rubicon, if she wants to add anything, but that was our focus with this area. I do wanna highlight um, one key thing, a spotlight when I worked with Dale, he is also an individual that Patrice mentioned as well, is one of the key things that we wanted to work on was really look into this in more de detail and try to invite individuals that um, have lived experience. Um, it's a lot of us in CAB, like myself, that have lived experience with this to be able to talk about um, our experiences um, in reference to gaining employment and different things that we have dealt and faced with um, to be able to invite them to CAP. So that was one of the things we wanted to focus on is how can we get them better employment and better um, living wages. Do you want to add anything like from an employment standpoint that you may experience? Super quick. Um, I, I feel like the the real add to this recommendation was asking the county to, you know, to hire folks who are re-entering the community after incarceration, that felt like the new, um, yeah, the new suggestion. And there's been a lot of good reception to it. Um, and the other thing that occurs to me is that, um, you know, policies that the county has, um, you know, control over or input around, um, you know, continuing to advocate to employers. Um, I know that the Workforce Development Board um, does a lot of that, but, um, you know, other great employers, um, you know, along with the county helping them to um, change their policies and there have been new laws and this is where I would get out of my depth really quickly, but laws about banning the box or, um, you know, different um, measures that are that are out there to help encourage um, returning citizens to be able to get employment, which is, um, you know, what um, the vast majority of folks are seeking right when they come out. Thank you for that. Okay, so those are our six recommendations. Um, any questions before I move on? Let's see if I can see the, no? Okay, so we can go back to the um, PowerPoint and I will turn it over to Scott. You're on mute, Scott, oh, there we go. Well, I'm, I'm on mute there. I have to chase my picture across the screen there to catch up with it. Thank you, Nicole. Um, so what you've just heard were our recommendations and those largely um, were entered into what you see on the screen now as our ambassador talking points. Um, so there's two icons here that I need to address, talking points and a toolkit. Now I might, uh, for clarification, let you know you will not find necessarily a document that is called ambassador toolkit. It's called the CAB Ambassador Program Guide in a lot of cases, but it's the same document with the same purpose. So I put myself in your shoes to the new members. You're probably wondering, what does the ambassador program look like? What, how does it tactically occur? So first of all, we're gonna hand you, before I go there, a document that will help give you this document the toolkit, um, the guide, that gives you a lot of the structure of what our ambassador program looks like. And in that guide, there are nine elements to it that just spell out each step of the way for you when you go into one of your ambassador meetings. And so um, we, in our business model for the last couple of years have had uh, two members of the CAB 
attend each one of the ambassador meetings. So um, for instance, um, Crawford and I handled one with Matt Malone. Lenita and I handled one with Supervisor uh, Anderson. And these meetings can go for 30 minutes, they can go for an hour. A lot of that is decided by the person that we're having the meeting with. So as an ambassador, you're talking either to a member of the CCP, the Community uh, Corrections Partnership, or one of our Board of Supervisors, as we did with Supervisor Anderson. I want you to feel kind of excited about this role because this is a great opportunity. Um, and I'm sure Crawford will, will uh, second that and everyone else that is, has been a part of one. Um, but for the tactics of this, let me just let you know that the toolkit has these nine elements that will help you to formulate um, your ambassador meeting. And of course, if you look at the ambassador overview, um, it, you know, it creates a conduit between CAB and those that will ultimately vote on CAB's proposals. So of those speaking points or those recommendations that Nicole just hit on, those were boiled down to three. And in our talking points, we discussed the three, the housing, behavioral health, and employment. That was an important uh, focus. So that's where the conduit um, uh, it starts right there in the meeting is it's a, it's a pipeline for us to meet with key county figures to express um, our, our agenda. And also um, you'll see that the second function of course is for us to endorse certain um, uh, potentially controversial issues that the CAB may be recommending or addressing. And I don't see and didn't see anything controversial about our work in this last year, um, but it was certainly a great opportunity for us. So in the guide or the toolkit, um, the, um, there are the ambassador assignments and we'll work on that together as a group. You don't have to be worried about how that occurs. It's a, it's a group function. and people will get assigned to two ambassador meetings, um, as I did with the two that I mentioned to you. Um, the points of contact is in this kit and it's you know with the Board of Supervisors and the Community Corrections Partnership folks that we'll be meeting with, how to contact them, their, their contact information. And a sample correspondence requesting for the meeting, you'll see that in the guide. And that is, you can use in an email, you could use via US mail. It's just kind of a, a framing of how to initiate the ambassador meeting. Uh, tips for an effective ambassador meeting are in there. There are basics. They're all gonna make sense to you. I won't cover those. Um, and, you know, an outline for framing the interview. And that's really the talking points document that you saw also highlighted earlier. And um, that is going to frame your conversation so that you can feel confident in what you're sharing and expressing and nothing gets left out or forgotten. Example of summary meeting notes. Um, and then I think the most important thing is, is after the meeting concludes, you're responsible for an external report, um, very easy to complete um, and uh, no mystery there. There's those key points, those salient points that were discussed in that ambassador meeting. And there's also a sample thank you. Um, and you can thank a person. I didn't send one in one case because we had such a gracious uh, parting of the ways. Um, Supervisor Anderson and myself and Lenita, I don't, a, a thank you note would have uh, been not, it wasn't necessary, but there's certainly a format there for you to do that if you so wish. Um, so the guide will take care of, and the toolkit guide will take care of framing your meeting. The talking points, um, very important. 
And the way that will work for you is when you're paired up with another member, um, we call it a lead and a secondary. So one of you will be a lead, one of you will be a secondary. Um, that's really unimportant. I, I think you're equal partners in the meeting uh, with these talking points. It's just, you wanna come to an agreement, of course, on um, who's gonna say what. And um, I really enjoyed my meeting with um, uh, Crawford who did um, you know, an excellent job of framing the different points that he wanted to communicate and Lanita as well. It was fun in both cases and very meaningful. And I'll conclude because there's so much different information for you to be dealing with. What's the benefit of this meeting? Well, if you think of the year's activity at the big end of a funnel, the actual ambassador meeting is the small end of the funnel where we have synthesized our, our points that we wanna communicate. And the small end of the funnel is what you walk into that ambassador meeting with to give them the refined points that you think are critical for them to know. Um, both Matt Malone from Courts, um, he knew nothing about us. The value of the meeting as he expressed was he learned so much about what we do, who we are, and what we want to accomplish. There was a real benefit to that meeting. Just the opposite with um, Supervisor Anderson. She is very informed on who we are, what we're doing, and the meeting took a much different turn. So you want to be flexible as an ambassador and as a CAB member in these situations because um, the meetings aren't going to be the same. I thoroughly enjoyed both. I found Supervisor Anderson to be, first of all, she has a very strong background in the criminal justice system. She is very well informed on the issues, um, largely um, the current issues because um, Jill Ray is so uh, good at expressing those and sharing them with her. It made our job easy when we had our meeting because she she knew what she wanted to say and we knew what we wanted to and there was great agreement on on our common goals. So um, I no one should be intimidated. I was a little bit about what was this going to look like, but there is the toolkit, the talking points that we'll work on together. Um, the pre-meeting of the two, the lead and the secondary, and then there's the absolute joy of meeting with some of our members of the CCP and the Board of Supervisors. Any questions of that? Yay. Well, I've got the uh, uh, time later to, to anyone that would like to maybe thinks of a question and be happy to. Uh, Crawford, is there anything you want to add to what I said? Uh, no, uh, Scott, um, a very good presentation and recap. You hit the highlights without getting too much into the weeds. When it's time for us to have those doggone meetings, we have basically a roadmap. Yes. I guess, you know, we have a roadmap. You can use it if you desire. If you got a better method or a better way, by George, do it. So that's kind of where we are. Again, any questions prior to taking our break? Uh, this is Evan. I just uh, want to um, appreciate all the presentations, but in particular, this, this presentation, it's great when coming to new situations, having these type of templates seeing the structure of how the, the groups are put together to, to do the outreach, um, the timing on it. Um, really, really appreciate the, that attention to detail. Well, that, um, Crawford, that's, that's the greatest compliment to all that work, right? <laughs> <laughs> that went into, so thank you for that comment. Um, and lastly, the benefit of this, we learn about our fellow cab members. Um, Lanita and I had not had a chance to work together. This gave a great opportunity for me to learn more about Lanita and maybe she learned something about me. I don't know. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> All 
Are there if I may, one other thing I would add to this is uh, last year, I believe CAB got started with its um, ambassador meetings a little later in the year than anticipated. Um, I think that was mostly around October timeframe. So, and I know that um, before the year um, ended, folks um, expressed interest in wanting to start a little earlier. So to the newer folks, uh, just keep in mind that you um, may start to begin scheduling um, some of these meetings once it it's, uh, uh, gets discussed in the subcommittee and in the full body uh, meetings um, somewhere, I'm guessing summer, early fall, potentially. So um, just in terms of a time frame for you guys, that that's when these meetings will likely begin um, to get scheduled and, um, and discuss your work going forward. Good point. Are there any other comments, observations, et cetera? Hearing none, since things have been going pretty well, why don't we uh, reconvene at, at, what is it, 140? So at 140, we will start right on time. So thank you very much so far.
Hey, uh, Crawford, I apologize. I'm going to have to leave a little bit earlier than I hope for my next meeting. So I'm going to take off. Yeah, Evan, uh, yeah, we understand. Could you do me a favor, please? Sure. Text, uh, I sent you a, uh, uh, a review of the standing committees and mm -hmm. asked you to pick what's your first, second, and third choice. Okay. Would you send that, text that information to Monique, and that'll do it. I will do that. I will do that. I appreciate it. You all and, have a great, great weekend. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Good, good. We got you covered, Evan. Uh, I appreciate it, Crawford. Take okay. care. So you owe us. <laughs> all, yeah, for, for at least two years, I think. Yeah. No, no. Three <laughs> years. No, no, three no, years. no, no, no. No, because you got to leave early, you owe us for three years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. You owe me to that. Take care. Thank you, sir. Hey, Crawford, this is Lanita. Okay. I'm going to step away for a minute. I have to video some folks in our warehouse. So it's probably going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm going to step away and I'll come back. Okay. And now if we get into, you see, we're going to have the uh, secretary selection and some other information. So, okay, we'll just have to move with, move on without you, uh, Lanita. Okay. Okay. All I'll right. try to come right back, though. Okay. Thank you. That's a bad time to have Lonita leave. Hey, <laughs> I was going to say yes. that. He did it out there. I, I, we have I, I secretary selections. <laughs> hey, well, guess what? Maybe I'm it's sorry, a good time for I her. I do have to work too, though. <laughs> I'm I'm, Lanita, I'm right along with you. I'm it's just for all of us. I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, then. Um, it's 140, almost 141. We should get started. Would you put up the next slide, please? Uh, Monique. Okay, and could you then go to the next slide, please? And just stay there for a minute, uh, if you would. Um, what we want to do here is to kind of set the stage for the Secretary of CAB. What I'd like to do is give you a brief review of our Secretary's role. The most important is for the individual to serve on our leadership team with the chair and the vice chair. Keep in mind that your leadership team attempts to work as a unit. Let me repeat that. Keep in mind the three of us will be working as a unit. Article four, section four, references the role of the secretary. The secretary, and let me read just some of those highlights to you. The secretary works with the ORJ staff regarding minutes of the general meeting. While that's what we formally say, in effect, what happens is that ORJ puts together the minutes, sends it to us, and the secretary will just take a, take a glance at it. Also, the next item is the secretary verifies the attendance at our general CAB meetings with ORJ. Again, ORJ is the cornerstone of this particular effort. So you would basically assist. The next item is we wanna be responsible for the email list with ORJ, and that contains your email as well as a cell phone number where we can contact you or send you a text. And then finally, the role of the secretary works with ORJ regarding our online calendar. And again, this is handled by ORJ. While serving on our leadership team, we'll expect you to, to reach out to a select group of other CAB members to get, in effect, the pulse of our group. Your previous leadership team started this outreach. Now, again, that was just the very beginning. Again, we will attempt to lead by listening and talking with our fellow members. Next slide, please. On this slide, you can see key functions 
of our various subcommittees. Well, I think we're out of sequence here um, because we've got to get to the secretary. So I Robert, think the proper the pr previous slide was the action item. So if you wanted to, well, that's change. what I'm getting. Yeah, we have to back yeah. up. Sorry, <clears throat> Monique, you can keep the slide up unless you got you wanted to pull up the actual um, operating guidelines, Crawford. Otherwise, yes. the slide gi gives you the order of. Um, yes, uh, if you'll pull up the previous slide, please. Thank you. Okay, let me work on getting back backwards. It's a little challenging when I have to I have to put it back up. So I'll be there in a second. Just a okay, minute, please. That's all right. Hey, no, take your time. So why okay. don't we do this while we're waiting? What we're now looking for, <laughs> and we already have one person now that she's not here, so this is good. But what we're looking for is somebody to serve or volunteer uh, in the capacity as our secretary. And you don't, it, it, it's not required that you have previous experience. And the key here is, is it's a building block to learn about how CAB works, to work with, with a team. And then that would allow you to gain further knowledge and hopefully play a greater role with CAB. Now, let me stop. Are there any questions, particularly for our new people first, questions about the role of the secretary? Okay. From past members, any questions about the role of the secretary? Any questions? Okay, now, is there anyone that would like to entertain being considered as the Secretary of CAL? Well, I think as the gentleman yesterday said, alligator arms, we're going to need some help here. So somebody's got to step up to the plate. Let's take a look. We'll go at Reverend Van Hook. Might you have the time? Okay, he's not available. Scott, I know you're bowing, stepping down from your situation. Nicole is already tied up. Who else do we have here that could possibly be of assistance to us? Ozzy? Not at this time, Crawford. Okay. All right. And Crawford, real quick, just for clarification, the main role of this, or main responsibility of this is to re review and compare ORJ's documents to what is discussed at our meetings. Is that correct? For accuracy. Sometimes, but you know what? That's what it says literally in black and white. Yeah. But in effect, you can expand the role as you see fit. To do that, to get involved, to dig deeper, to work with uh, Nicole, pardon me, with Monique and with Patrice, if you so desire. I mean, I'm happy to step up if no one else is interested in the role. Okay. Is there anyone else? Lanita, you're back. We are looking for a secretary of CAB. I am back. And so what does this role entail? Because I am interested. Okay. Um, we covered it earlier. Let's see. Oh, if we... sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Hold on. Hold on. Let me cover it again with you. Okay. It's based on Article 4, Section 4 of our, um, our guidelines. And the secretary's role is such that you'll be working with 
ORJ regarding the minutes. Okay. And then you'll be verifying the attendance at our general CAB meetings, again, with ORJ. And then you'll be responsible for our email list that makes sure that we have the correct emails as well as the phone number, cell numbers in effect. And then you'll be working with ORJ regarding our own, our online calendar. In effect, you'd be assisting ORJ or Monique and uh, Patrice. Okay. That so uh, again, now here's what the key is though. And this is for both of you. And let me cover this again. The more, most important role for that individual is to serve on our leadership team and you would be serving with Nicole and myself. And keep in mind that this leadership team attempts to work as a unit. So we're gonna be requesting, for example, for you to make calls to other CAB members that don't conflict with the Brown Act. We'll get it set up so there's no conflict. But what the whole point is, we want to lead by listening and talking with our fellow CAB members. So you'll be requested to reach out and no, hey, no telling, as you probably already know, Lanita, you'll get a text or a phone call or an email from me. So, yep. hey, I just want you to know, and, <laughs> or and both Justin, you haven't experienced that yet either. So uh, no telling. <laughs> So does that clarify for you, Lanita? Yes. And does that clarify for you, Justin? Okay, good, good. All right. So we have two uh, nominations for the camp. Hey, Crawford, if yes. Lanita is interested in the role, I'm by all means, she's all she can take it. I was just stepping up in the case that no one wanted it. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Lanita. Are you with us? Come on, Lanita. <laughs> okay. I'm with you. I, I okay, you. good. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Lanita. Uh -huh. now, just because you said that, the first meeting will be at Panera Bread, just like uh, <laughs> like our previous meeting. <laughs> All I need is a week in advance to, for anything, <laughs> right? So I can get it on my schedule because this job that I have here is all about CAB and they want me to be inclusive and they want me to be a part of it and they are fully, fully, fully engrossed in what we are doing and they have given me time off or time to work during work to do this work. Okay. So unlike the last job, <laughs> <laughs> okay then. I won't have any issues with that. Thank so you I, very but much. I just need to, I have to turn in my weekly schedule every Monday. So okay. I just need to make sure that my things are on the schedules at least a week in advance. Thank you. Okay, well, Crawford, I'm jealous now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to go to Panera Bread. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta talk about so this. Panera Bread, here she <laughs> You hear that, Ozzy? We didn't get Panera Bread. <laughs> I hear it loud and clear, and it's recorded. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, then. Justin, first of all, you stepped up you're in trouble now because I'm going to remember this. We're all in, particularly Nicole, she's got a long memory. So uh -huh. we got plans for you. Okay. Oh, I do already, probably. Yeah. I do already. <laughs> okay. Would we, uh, would somebody be kind enough to provide a motion for Lanita Mims Beal to be our new secretary for the coming year? This is Nicole. I motion for Lanita Mims to be our secretary for the upcoming year, for CAP secretary. Yeah. Do we have a second? We have I a second. second. <laughs> we got a second and a third. Yes. <laughs> Is there any discussion by any member here on the board first? Any discussion? Okay. Is there any public comment or discussion from anyone in the public? None being heard. Would you please call the vote, Monique? Yes. Um, Crawford Carpenter. Aye. Nicole Green. Aye. Ozzie Carter. 
Aye. Scott Parsons. Aye. Reverend Julius Van Hook. Aye. Raina Moore. Aye. Brenda Lee. Aye. Latanya Thompson. Aye. Justin Van Zerber. Aye. And Lanita Mims. Aye. Okay, motion carries. All right. Congratulations. Well, thank you, yes. you all. I promise to do the best job as secretary as I possibly can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you so very, very much. We uh, most appreciate you uh, stepping up to the plate. Can we now move to slide the next slide, which is slide 17, where we're going to chat here just a little bit about the overview of the CAB subcommittee or standing committee key functions. Are we on slide 17? Because I'm working from a different uh, device here. Are we set to go, Monique? Yes. Okay, thank you. While Article 6 of our guidelines deals directly with our standing committees, please take note of other articles that might also be of interest. Article 2, Duties and Powers, Section 3, we serve solely as an advisory board. Article 3, Membership, Section 1, we strive to have equal representation if at all possible, on the board with individuals from West Central and East Counties. In addition, our CAB recruitment process looks for participation from formerly incarcerated individuals, as well as those individuals impacted by crime. Article 5, Meetings and Notice, Section 1, our meetings are open public meetings in accordance with the provisions of the Brown Act. And Article 6, I'm coming back to it, our committee, Section 4, standing committees shall engage in activities outlined in their charters, as well as the important items referenced on this slide. Now, could you take us to the next slide, please? Are there any questions about the policy or outreach and community engagement subcommittee? And would you like to cover briefly what your work plan was last year? Uh, Scott, I'm sorry. Um, so what was the question again, please? Are there any questions, you know, for the group regarding outreach and community engagement? Could you give us one or two highlights of last year's work plans, or maybe oh. those were your accomplishments? Uh, I, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, obviously all the accomplishments that we talked about earlier um, were a result of the work plan, but I don't know if that document is going to be brought up or not, um, but uh, it, it's it's not necessary. There's um, for for the new members, the work plan basically speaks to what is the task, and I've already enumerated what the two tasks, the major tasks for OCEC is membership and cultivation, or membership cultivation and uh, community outreach, and then there's those. Um, outcomes or goals to achieve those things. And then there's the timeline or date. Um, a lot of the uh, membership cultivation, and um, you'll see here shows ongoing, ongoing. And, and that's, boy, is that the truth? Um, we're uh, probably about to jump into that again in terms of recruitment and interviews and selection and placement of, of candidates. Um, so, um, the others that have actual dates attached to them, um, under like community outreach, uh, you can see the, you know, the PowerPoint, we'll start to review certain documents, um, in May, uh, to, to make sure that they represent, um, what we want them to. And we did that last year. We do it every year. 
Um, but I, I don't, I think most of this is really self-explanatory. There are some that you can see there's an individual assigned to it. Um, for example, and, and that's fine, but in all honesty, all of OCEC members uh, participate in each one of these in an ongoing way. Um, and, and the only, I, I guess the area that we fell short um, in my book, um, and it's no one's fault, it's just there wasn't enough time for public presentations, us going out into the community and educating uh, the community on our role and our mission and our deliverables. Um, I, I hope to uh, see um, more of that in, in 23 and 24. And certainly um, I'm stepping down as the, and I guess at some point, right, uh, uh, Crawford, you're gonna be looking for someone to step up um, to run this committee. Whoever chooses to do it, I'm gonna work alongside it to make sure that you know exactly um, what, what is necessary and what is needed and make sure you're not left stranded in any way. Yeah. Um, but I have to step down for another obligation that I have that everyone was aware of a year ago when I came on. Well, thank you, Scott. And I think we already have one person who already stepped up. We won't mention his name, you know, depending on what their interests are. So, hey, thank you, Scott. Yeah, we'll have to play rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would we uh, be kind enough to move to the next slide so we can, uh, and who is that? Programs and services. Lila, make your sales pitch. All right, I get to do another sales pitch. Well, yes. the programs and services is where you get to um, find those gaps, explore gaps, make suggestions, meet with different um, providers and learn. So um, I think that the survey is really fun and you get it first, you get to have input on it and um, you know, hear from all of the um, service providers and the departments that were that are funded by AB 109 funds and that we're working with. And so, um, yeah, this is a place to dream, create, investigate, ask the right questions, um, and you know, invest your time and energy in um, moving those ideas forward. So we're really um, we're really instrumental in helping. Um, bring some specificity to the recommendations. Um, so policy and budget, um, you know, creates the budget and the recommendations document that gets forwarded. But I recommend that this committee, um, you know, focus every meeting and its timeline and schedule on um, the recommendations that they'll be um, likely putting forward. And as I mentioned last time, um, you know, you you might want to pick something to focus on the first meeting, like, okay, we're just, we're going for housing this year, or, you know, somebody comes in with, with a passion project, and they have energy to research it and to write something about it, and the whole team wants to support that individual. So the three areas of our work plan are advocacy and support of CAB policy platform, um, which all of the subcommittees, you know, do that to some degree. Um, and there's overlap, you know, with some of the different work of the subcommittees. Um, the survey, which I've mentioned a few times, and then the last area is promoting a comprehensive needs assessment. So understanding what's out there already um, and having clarity about that. So that one is kind of tricky. Um, and there's, you know, plenty of work that can be done there. I do just want to say that the folks who are on the subcommittee can scratch the work plan if they want to and start over or, you know, um, minimize some of the things. So we just want to have, you know, one or two of these pieces um, on our on our work plan. We're going to, um, you know, research um, this area of a gap and we're going to do the survey. Um, so I hope that that felt like a pitch. Um, I would, this is for the whole cap. I would say that um, sometimes our recommendations get a little bit lost or there's confusion around them. I, I was at a 
CCP meeting where um, they were like, well, aren't those the same recommendations? Um, and they weren't the same recommendations. They were probably similar topics, but we had shortened the list and we had added details. Um, and so, you know, the more we can underscore and underline what our recommendations are and provide clarity, um, you know, to the CCP and the PPC about those recommendations, um, the better I think things will move forward. Um, so, yeah, that's my sales pitch and also, you know, stuff to work on. And unless anybody else has anything else to add, I will turn off my, my or put on my mute button. Thank you, Lila. Were there any questions of Lila regarding the Programs and Services Standing Committee? Any questions? Okay, I don't see any. Let's move then finally. Nicole, it's your show. Yes, yes, and I'm excited. Um, so let me do my sales pitch here. Um, <laughs> I've been waiting for my turn. <laughs> So um, policy and, and, and budget, um, if you're really interested in reference to understanding how the money moves, um, the AB 109 funds are allocated and how they move within the programs to best fit this population, here is where you want to be. If you're good with numbers, spreadsheets, I know for the past couple of days, I've heard a few people that are good with budgeting. Um, you want to come over to the policy and budget uh, subcommittee because that's exactly what you're due. So um, Patrice gave some great information on day one about um, um, the funding. Um, we looked over the budget recommendations that we did last year. Um, I'm really, I'm really excited about policy and budget this year um, because the, the, the different thing that stands out is although we made those recommendations, one of the key things that we focused on is we really wanted to dig deep and um, look at the programs to really figure out how money should be allocated. So if you have that um, that part in you where you want to really um, make you don't really have a voice around how money should be moved around, how programs should be structured, where that need is. Um, uh, policy and budget is the best place to do that. Um, this is where the work, uh, the work groups kind of came out of because we really wanted to get an idea before we just say move money around. Where does it really need to go? So, um, if you like numbers like I do, it's the best place to go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the key things that we worked on real quickly, um, there was two main goals. The first goal was continuing advocating for tracking um, progress toward equity in the criminal justice system in Contra Costa County. That was goal number one. Um, and within that goal, one of the first key step that we looked at was research. Um, and that's exactly what we need um, in reference to finding data um, around um, our reentry population and looking at different demographics, uh, demographics, excuse me, different graphics such as their race, gender, um, ability, mental health status, and its impact. Um, we really want to focus on the recommendations um, in policy and budget um, in reference to making those uh, uh, recommendations to CCP on, how, on, on money changes. Another thing that we looked at is identifying the gap. So you heard us earlier talk about um, our, our recommendations. Um, a few of the members and uh, Patrice, thank you, point out some key factors that we realize in CAB that is needed um, within our uh, uh, criminal justice population, our system. Um, around policies and, and and just what's needed in reference to our ranchy population. So we do look into that, um, looking to identify those gaps. I believe that we did a great, um, we did a great job last year in identifying those. And those are one of the key things that we look to work towards this year. Um, the last one to thank you, Ozzy. She was uh, awesome in, in, in reference to joining um, some outside um, um, calls attending the racial justice oversight. So she would uh, bring back information to um, the subcommittee um, from that particular call. And that all went with goal number one. And then our goal number two was developing the uh, fiscal year cap policy and budget recommendations. So again, we looked at the recommendations from CAB and the budget um, from the previous year. And as uh, Patrice said, we always look a year ahead. So that's what we'll be focusing on this year. Once we have a confirmation um, of of the recommendations that we did from um, last year. So that is my spiel. And Patrice, I feel like I know something this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I'll okay. pass it back. <laughs> All right. Any questions of Nicole regarding policy and budget? 
All right, then now let's move to any questions again. Let's start with OCEC, which would be Outreach and Community Engagement. Any questions there or any questions pertaining to programs and services from Lila? Okay, without there being yeah, any questions. I don't think the last one's mine. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I was on mute. I'm multitasking, sorry. Oh, okay, all right. Would you be kind enough to take us then to slide 21? Okay, slide, this particular slide here covers some very interesting information about assigning membership to subcommittees. Let me give you the highlights of the slide. Number one, each of you will participate in at least one standing committee. If you desire to participate in two, you're more than welcome to do so. We'll do our best to assign you to a standing committee of your choice. Also, note the quorum requirements. And this is so important that um, if you commit to a committee, we have times allotted for these committees that you attend because we have to have quorum before we can conduct any business. And the final highlight here is we'd like you to note that STABS standing, let's try that again, not SCABS, CABS standing committees are the backbone of CAB. Let's now just take a look at and point out that we will primarily organize ourselves to do CAB's work through these standing committees. We've talked about budget and policy, programs and services, outreach and community engagement. Now let's move to the committee selection. And this is the way the process is gonna work and hopefully you're gonna help me here on the screen there, Monique. Step one, we will ask members to self-select standing committee membership with respect first to our past CAB members. And then we'll address their preferences first, followed by the preferences from our newest members. So Monique has a priority listing as to when you have been or when you were a member or you applied to CAB. We will use those dates for our selection process and then we will try to fill out the grid that Monique has, and then we'll see how everything kind of plays out, and we'll see how um, everything fits. Uh, any questions or any other comments from Monique or Patrice? Okay, seeing no comments. Then uh, let's move to, okay, who do you have first on your list, Monique? So um, it would be, um, hey, how you doing? hold on one second, please. Okay, so I have, um, I, I have between, I'll, I'll just call off the, the members that have, been in existence. So it would be um, Ozzy, no, Nicole, Ozzy, and you, Crawford, the three senior positions, I would say. Okay, well, Nicole's already taken. So we right, know Nicole's she, already taken. So and, it would be you and Ozzy. Well, I'm not included. So Ozzy, it's your show. Where do you okay. want to be? <laughs> Programs and services. Okay, so Ozzy for programs and services. Uh, let's move then. I'll put Nicole will be policy and budget. Okay, now who's next on your list there, please, Monique? Scott. Scott? Yes. What so, um, my thought was that I would stay, unless you have other plans, with outreach and community engagement only because I feel like I could um, assist with the continuity of activity there. Excellent choice. 
next. Okay, the next person would be um, uh, Reverend Van Hook. Um, let's see. Outreach and community. Uh, let's, uh, yeah. Programs and services, actually. Okay, programs and services. No, you know, I'm sorry. Let me do outreach and community engagement. Outreach, okay, that's fine. Now that we know you're waffling. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's also interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay, who is next? Uh, okay. Oh, wait a minute. The next would be Joel, if I'm correct. That is correct. And he's not present at the time. Yeah. And did you get a copy? I have from Joel. His first choice is outreach and community engagement. Okay. So let me click him off. And his second choice, though, was programs and services. So what we'll do is leave that alone right now. So I, I put Joel Nickerson Shanks down for OCEC. Okay. And now what is our sequence of our other members? I think Evan, Evan? Evan Decker. Mm -hmm. And did he send you his choice? No, I don't have it. I thought he sent that. Hold on one okay. second. Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, my preferred committees, uh, uh, programs and services. Wow. Okay. Well, this is really, so we'll put Evan down for programs and services. And then who's after Evan, please? Uh, Latanya Thompson. Oh, wait a minute. We're out of sync. What about Lenita? Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Way. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lenita is before Evan, actually. Yes. She's Evan. actually. Yeah, she's, yeah, I don't have the dates on this form, but Lenita is before Evan. I would like. So where would you like to go, Lenita? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what did she say? Programs and services? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, I love this. Uh, darn, the way this is just okay. Thank you, Lenita. You're welcome. Okay, then we have, now we have Latanya. Okay, program and services. Okay, Latanya's programs and services. Okay, who was next? Uh, the next one would be uh, Rena Moore. Um, I like programs and services too, please. Oh boy. Okay, that's okay. And then let's go to Brenda, Brenda. Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, outreach and community engagement. Mm. Okay, so outreach and community engagement, we have four, one, two, three, four, five. We have the programs and services. And we didn't give Nicole any help. I got Nicole. No, I'll help thank, her out. thank you. I think everyone got scared. I left off in my sales pitch. Patrice provides a lot of assistance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. We forgot about Justin. Is that Justin? Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll work with Nicole. I love it. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Now, we may be overloaded in programs and services. So in that case, you can move me over the policy and budget. Thank you. Oh, oh Lenita, you will, <laughs> you will move over, Lenita? Yeah. Oh, man, what a team player. I love it. I was torn between the two. So. Oh, okay. Well, you're not torn anymore. Okay. Let me. So that gives us one, two, three, four for programs and services. One, two, three, four for OCEC. And that gives us three for uh policy and budget that completes our listing unreal that this I, can i can i just add and tell ozzy i'm gonna miss her face <laughs> <laughs> she highlights trust, my calls <laughs> trust me i will be in the wings okay <laughs> it's a friday i'll be in the wings <laughs> okay now let's see what's our next step here now, can you summarize those and go over that, please? Um, uh, yes. So we have Joel Nicholson Shanks, Reverend Julius Van Hook, Scott Parsons, and Brenda Lee for outreach. And then Ozzie Carter, Evan Decker, Latanya Thompson, Raina Moore, 
for programs and services. And um, for policy and budget, we have Nicole Green, Justin Van Zerber, and Lanita Mims um, for program policy and budget. Sorry. Okay. All right. Going once, going twice. Looks like that's it. So this is good. We have our committees basically set up. Now let's go to the next phase. Why don't we start with what's on your screen here? Let's start with OCEC. Of the four of you, we need someone to be the chair of OCEC. And remember, whoever that person is, you will have outstanding help from Scott as well as myself. Is there anybody that would like to step up to be the chair of OCEC? And if you're a first year person, uh, don't stray away because my first year, we had a first year person that was the chair of OCEC and I was the vice chair as a first year person. So um, please, please step up. Uh, Crawford, if, I'm, if, if I may, can I just give a quick overview of what the chair duties entail? Yes, Hopefully. please. Okay. Um, so the chairs of each uh, subcommittee um, is, is there to ensure that the subcommittee meetings call, are called into order. Um, you will meet um, in addition to your subcommittee meetings and um, your full body uh, meetings, you will also meet with our team here at ORJ and the leadership um, team, as well as the other chairs of the subcommittees uh, monthly as well to develop your agendas for the next, for your next following meeting. So you will get the support of our staff as well as, you know, collaborate with um, some of the other um, members um, to ensure that the work that you guys are doing in your committee uh, carries forward. You will also be uh, uh, required to put together a report out document, uh, which is essentially are just bulleted highlighted points of what was discussed in your, um, in your meeting. Um, we do recommend though for each subcommittee, just so that the load is shared, that in addition to a chair, that there may be a vice chair and a recorder to kind of help share those responsibilities. These are not um, uh, uh, roles that are specified within your operating guidelines. However, just for the sake of ensuring that the subcommittees are operating fully, that we're not missing meetings due to lack of quorum, um, that those duties could be shared among a few of you rather than just one primary chair. So that's just sort of a snapshot there of the roles and duties of the chair that can be shared um, with other members of the subcommittee as well. Thank you for that, uh, Patrice. That's most helpful. All right, let's go back to outreach and community engagement. Uh, Scott has already served as the chair and he will be a tremendous resource to whoever desires to be the chair or would like to step up. Um, may I look at uh, or ask for consideration that Reverend Van Hook or Brenda Lee consider being the chair? I'm hearing crickets. I so want this. Uh, sorry, this is Brenda ahead, Lee. Go ahead, Brenda. Okay, I'm sorry. I could be the recorder because I've got another assignment that I that will take a lot of my time. So I could be the recorder instead of being a chairman or a chair or vice chair. I see. Okay. Reverend Van Hook. Where is he? Is he there? Hmm. Okay. Well. We're gonna to have to figure out how we get a chair of, of this committee because this is so important. We've got three vacancies currently for our alternates and we'll have to figure out how to get that committee working uh, or moving 
with a, with a chair, but that's fine. Let's move on then. Uh, can we now move to programs and services? Is there anybody that would like to step up as the chair? We'll start with you, Ozzy. I accept. Oh, okay, that's easy. <laughs> All right. And, and I'll tell you why. I'll, let me tell you why. Because after uh, two years on policy and budget, I think that my last year with CAB would definitely, I would be a great benefit and asset to program and services. And Outstanding. Uh, yes. Okay. Is there anybody here that would like to be the vice chair? Latanya or Rena? Okay. I can be the vice chair. I'm sorry, it took me forever to get off mute. Oh, that's all right. Okay, Latanya, great. Wonderful. And Rena, by chance, would you be available to assist us as the recorder? Um, sure. Okay. Well, we pressured you into that. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding you, Marina. No okay. problem. But thank you. All right. Now let's move to, again, these are just nominations. We have to come back through the process and vote on, on these various positions. Now let's move then to policy and budget. We already have a chair. And we're looking for a vice chair and maybe from, we should say first, since Lanita is the secretary, might Justin, uh, you consider sure. being vice chair? Wonderful, that's done. And Lanita might- I'm sorry, was it? Uh, Lanita, might you consider being the recorder of policy and budget? Understanding that you have other duties? I guess, right. I was going to say that it would get advice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. You'll, you'll serve as the recorder then, Lanita? Yeah. Okay. All right. And just to emphasize, because I know folks might be a little um, skinnish when it comes to recording piece, it really is the responsibility of the chair to ensure that the report out documents are that the ORJ receives them because they're typically included in the agenda packets for the full body meetings. So wherever possible, if you feel that um, between the chair and the recorder, wherever, however you guys want to compare notes, however you want to do that, make sure you guys communicate with each other around, well, in the case of um, policy and budget, you two communicate with us because um, together it'd be a quorum. But, um, mm -hmm. but we, we are more than happy to, to work with you guys and we have templates um, um, for you to work from. And again, these will be just bulleted items of what was discussed in the meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, um, has any, are there any questions now? Let's take a look at, at our sheet here. We have our committees and we have chairs of two of the three committees and we'll figure out OCEC. Uh, we'll get that worked out. Looks like Joel will have to be the chair. <laughs> Why don't you Proper. write his name and put a question mark there? <laughs> that would tell Proper, him. Just, Justin um, has his hand up. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just curious about quorum for these subcommittees, if that's uh, a struggle with only having three people. Uh, two people have to be there. Two of the three? Yes. Okay. And then three of the four where we have four members for your quorums. Understood. And then if, like, if that doesn't happen or we need to reschedule, is that a, a lengthy process because it's all public information? Uh, not really. Yeah. The, Monique and Patrice do an excellent job. Prior to the meetings, we go out or they go out and say, this is our meeting date the following week or whatever. Are you going to be there? 
So right. we don't have you needlessly showing up and then you don't have a quorum. And Patrice and I have been working on some information on the change in the guidelines. So if by chance Nicole happens to be at a meeting or I happen to be at a meeting, I can be temporarily assigned and then you'll have quorum to pro progress. Wonderful. Thank yeah, you and, and I'm trying to move the envelope even further to say, even if there's a regular member of CAB there, can they be a temporary member and then their membership would expire at the end of the meeting? And uh, they kind of thumb their nose at me on that one, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to add further, um, Justin, we typically a week out um, or close to a week out, maybe a little shorter, we do um, request RSVPs or confirmations from folks um, to see whether or not we have quorum. If we anticipate that we won't, we will cancel that meeting and then work with the chairs to um, reschedule. Um, it's really good to have vice chairs because in the event that the chair cannot make the meeting, um, the vice chair can serve in that, that capacity to ensure that the meeting continues continues on, even if you do have um, quorum, but the chair may be absent. So we'll continue to work with you guys and always give you kind of a heads up um, of what, what, to what to us. Uh, anticipate prior to your meeting. Wonderful, thank you. Good, good. All right, can you guide us through the process now? We have, I think the next step here is, is we, now do we vote separately on each of the standing committees or do we lump them together? Uh, what's the best way? Maybe we should, uh, what's the best way Patrice and uh, Monique or Monique and Patrice? I think it's best to do it separately because you're you're going to be calling for specific chairs for each committee. Okay. So just for the sake of the record, we want to have that. All right. Let's start then with programs and services. Is there a motion for Ozzy Carter to be the chair? This is Nicole. I motion for Ozzy Carter to be the chair of programs and services subcommittee. Is there a second? This is Latonya Thompson, I second. Thank you. Is there any discussion by board members? Uh, is there any, oh, excuse point, me. Point of order, uh, Crawford, is the voting people for the motion that was just made, is that only programs and services appointees or is that all of us? Voting? The entire cab board votes. Okay. Yeah, they, you see, in effect, the process we went through, they selected someone. Yeah. Now the board has to approve that yeah. individual. Yeah. Okay. okay, good, good. All right. Um, any does it, public comment? Can you call the vote, please, Monique? Okay, um, just one second. Okay, so um, Crawford? Aye. Nicole? Uh, aye. Ozzie? Aye. Scott? Aye. Reverend Ben Hook? Aye. Rena Moore? Aye. Brenda Lee? Aye. Latanya? Aye. Justin? Aye. And Lanita? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Ozzie, congratulations. You are now the chair of programs and services. Thank you so very much. Uh, let's move to the uh, next now. Do, do we have to, we don't have to approve the vice chair, do we? We don't vote on that, do we? That's um, just, no. that's internal. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay, let's move then. Oh, we don't have to because Nicole is automatically by our guidelines and charter. She's automatically the chair. That's right. So it looks like, we're in good shape and we've got this out. Any questions before we move forward? Any questions, observations, Patrice, Monique? Ah, help us out. Anything that you can think of? Patrice. Uh, please note that the uh, was highlighted in blue is typically your uh, meeting cadence for the year for each subcommittee. Well, we have scheduled out at least for this month. Uh, we pushed it back one week to give staff time um, to gather agenda items and post them 
Um, and so that means, I believe it's on your agenda on the second page of the agenda, the outreach and community engagement subcommittee would then be scheduled for January 24th from 11 a.m. to 12.30. Oh, it says 12.30 a.m. It'll be 12.30 p.m. <laughs> but anyway, um, so because we do not have a chair at the moment, nor a, well, yeah, because we do not have a chair, that meeting would not be called to order. So um, Crawford, we might want to check in with um, Joel, at least between now and uh, maybe the first, the next uh. full cab meeting, which would be in um, February. Um, and then have the first OCEC meeting start in February, later in February. That's well, just... no problem. Why don't we do this? As I did last year, put me down as the temporary chair, and okay. we'll have to find someone else uh, to do it because that'll, con uh, you know, I, I just won't be able to do it through the whole year, but I'll serve just as the chair to get it, just say temporarily. And yes. Uh, Patrice, do we have to vote on policy and budget overall? I mean, I understand Nicole is the automatic chair, but do we still have to vote on that overall? No, so we don't necessarily have to vote on the full membership of the of the subcommittees, just the leadership in order to call the meetings into order. Okay. And make sure it's temporary. All right, thank you. And if if we can't get a chair of just so you know everybody can understand what could possibly happen if we can't get a chair of outreach and community engagement, we may have to move someone to another committee and then get someone from another committee to come over and be the chair of outreach and community engagement. So just so you're aware that it's it's really important that we um, you know, have a working, uh, working chair of that committee. So uh, no problems there. All right, let's go to next steps or I mean next steps. What What's next on our agenda there? What do you have up there for us, uh, Monique? Okay, just one second. Let me stop sharing. All right. Okay, thank you. I think we're running up on a break. We have a little bit of time before our break. I think we have that scheduled at 2.45, but we can um, have some time to talk about um, the standing committee meeting schedule, if that works okay. for folks. And then um, any potential agenda items you all would like to discuss at your initial um, subcommittee meeting. Yeah, I have some times here. So um, do we have listed? Okay, we'll talk a few minutes about that. If we start with OCEC, it's the third Tuesday of the month at 11 o'clock. Programs and uh, services, it's the third Thursday of the month at 11. And policy and budget is the third Friday of the month at 1030. Is it any way possible to move that from 1030 to 11? Uh, which committee? Policy and, policy and budget. I'm okay with that. Um, Justin, does that work for you? The time shouldn't be a problem. Um, the only concern I have is sometimes I go out of town on weekends, like a long weekend. Is there a way to change the date or not? If not, I can accommodate just questioning. So for, for me, my, my, my problem isn't the time, it's the date. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but we well, what we could do is we could play it by ear if we could leave it to Friday. And then if you do have one of those vacation days, I know that uh, we're really flexible on changing stuff. Um, right. And that way I'll have access to my schedule mm -hmm. and I can say, okay, yes, let's move it. And we could check with Anita as well. Perfect. That sounds great. 11 a.m. is wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay so just to, just to recap, 
then your next scheduled um, policy and budget meeting, and just as a reminder, we did push it back one week for everybody. Um, so that would be Friday, January 27th. New time will be 11 to 12.30. Will that work for the policy and budget subcommittee member? Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me double check, Patrice, because in my mind, I don't know why February was stuck in my <laughs> Give me one second. Um, Friday still work. I just have to look at the 27th. Um, I don't get it. Come on. Sorry, you guys. Uh, what time are we okay? No, that'll be fine. Um, on the 27th, that is fine. That's fine. Okay, and thank you, Patrice. Did you say January 27th? Yes, thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, so January let's... 27th from 11 a.m. to 12 30. And then, are there any initial agenda items that you guys um, would like to um, have? Um, at the top of your list for that meeting? Um, the very first one, of course, is my um, my work plan. Okay. I want to review that. Um, as well as, um, if, if, if time permits, the uh, previous year budget and recommendations so I can go over that with um, Justin and um, Lanita. And Patrice, um, Nicole and I have worked together on some suggestions for each of the committees for things to consider. So uh, we'll share those with you prior to the meetings. How's that? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, great. And thank you there, Patrice. Uh, can we move to programs and services now? Third Thursday of the month at 11, that would be January the 26th. Uh, how does that time work for programs and services members? Start with you, Ozzy, as the chair. It works well for me. Okay, and uh, Evan, he's not here. Latanya? It works for me. And Rena? It works for me as well. Geez, you guys are easy. This is good. And just to confirm, you guys are cool with the start time of 11 a.m.? Your meeting duration will be 11 to 12.30. This is what's happening. Yes. yes, it works for me as well. Okay, cool. Excellent. And again, um, Ozzy, we'll be sending you, and for committee chairs, uh, we've drafted like an intro for you and how to begin your meetings, et cetera. So don't even worry about that stuff. We've already got that laid out. So Ozzy, you're covered. Uh, Nicole, you've already got it. Scott's already got the intro and we can pass that on or um, to the uh, new chair of whoever that is at OCEC. So don't worry about that to get you started. Uh, we'll go to OCEC and their meetings are Tuesday at 11 a.m. And let's start with Brenda. Is 11 a.m. okay, or would you prefer 10.30? Because- No, 11 is fine. Okay. And then Joel, he doesn't have a choice. He's not here. Okay. Reverend Van Hook, uh, January 24th at 11. Is 11 o'clock good for you? That will work. Okay. That'll be the third Tuesday of each month. And then Scott. A absolutely. Okay. Jeez. Darn. I, I'm amazed at how this is going. We've got we've got one heck of a group here. <laughs> All right, let's move to the general meeting now. Is this etched in stone, Patrice, or can can that be changed if people desire? Um, I would like to say it's um uh, sketched in stone. However, I don't make that final decision. That's okay. kind of <laughs> up to the full body. But you typically, and also the broader community is is fairly aware that they can expect on the second Thursday of every month that CAB meetings take place. So 
Okay. Um, however, if that conflicts with many of you, we can always make adjustments. Is there anyone that has a problem? And again, for those of you that are fairly new, we went over this schedule with you during the interviewing process. However, something may have changed and we wanna be sensitive to that. Does it appear that the second Thursday of every month at 1030, you will be available so that we're able to have quorum? I'm available. I am as well. Yep, no problem. Okay. Any other comments? The time is the time is ten thirty. I have ten. <laughs> but that no, the time be... is ten. Okay. The time is ten to twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you guys referring to the um, main cab meetings or the subcommittee? Main cab. Main cab. Right. Okay. Ten to twelve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we've got that taken care of. Do we now want to move to take a break? And then we'll come back and kind of head down the yes. head down the path. And why don't we do this? I know it says on the schedule we were going to take a five five minute break. Do you want to do just five minutes and then we can try to wrap this up or do you want to ten do you need a ten minute break? Five, five. Okay, we'll take a five minute break at two. We'll do it this way at 2.51, we will get started. Okay, thank you.
Okay, are we ready to move? Nicole, does it look like we're ready to step into your portion? On slide 24, are we ready to go, Nicole? I have to hold on just a minute until Nicole joins us. Uh oh, I just got something here from Nicole. Uh, she's She may be tied up here for a second. So why don't we do this? I'll move forward and pick up the ball here from Nicole. Let's take a look at what have we accomplished. Maybe we can review and reflect on what's been going on the last two days. And maybe we could go around the room one word, describe how you feel about this experience over the, over the past two days. Why don't I we start? Was, yes, oh, please. Sorry, um, I thought it was very informative. I got a lot of good information and um, I look forward to, to doing the work with according to the, starting with the subcommittees and everything. It's been a good experience so far. Thank you, Rena. Latanya. Excitement is my one word. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Justin. I'm energized. Okay. And Reverend Van Hook. Informed. Okay. Well, that's good. And then now let's come to Ozzy. One word. Empowered. Okay. Lila? Content. <laughs> yeah, because you're leaving, huh? <laughs> okay. And Lanita? Mine would be uh, recap. Okay. And Brenda? Eager. Okay. Well, those are some interesting words, and we'll... Uh, Let's make sure and see if we can take this energy of uh, moving forward. Um, let's go to this last one. What do you think you'll need to support your engagement uh, with an NCAB this year? Um, are, is there anything that anyone feels that they need? Is there additional support that we might provide uh, as an assist? Uh, why don't we start with maybe some of the new members let's start with Brenda is there anything you think you need that we need to assist you with no I'm just eager to get started and I'm pleased by the openness of all the the uh, previous cab members and hoping that the, us new as newbies will get to that same position 
Okay, thank you. And Rena? Um, nothing really. Um, I've kind of already connected with some of the previous guy members and exchange phone numbers and stuff, so I guess feel like I have a good start. Okay, fine. Let's move over to Latanya. Uh, Latanya, you're on mute. I huh? guess she's not. Let's move to the next one. Justin? Yeah, I feel like I have a good base understanding and uh, just excited to dive deeper into the weeds. Okay, and Scott and Nicole and Lila, um, speak up if you wish. Or Latanya, did you have something to share with us? Yes, this has been very helpful and I feel like it's given me the foundation and the understanding that I need um, to be successful in the role. Okay, and then Ozzy and Lila, Nicole, I think Nicole is still tied up, um, but Ozzy and Lila, anything else? Support and encouragement from each other. Okay. Okay. All right, moving along. Okay, we're on next steps now. So the next slide, please, Monique. And are there any next steps that you would like or that you're looking for as we move to our next meeting? Uh, the uh, only thing just to recap that um, the next um, the next meetings that you all can expect uh, to uh, receive calendar invites for is that the Outreach and Community Engagement Subcommittee will be scheduled for Tuesday, January 24th from 11 to 12, uh, 11 to 12.30, excuse me. You will have programs and services scheduled for Thursday, January 26th from 11 to 12.30. And then also policy and budget, which will be scheduled for Friday, January 27th at 11 to 12.30. Your next full body meeting will be scheduled for Thursday, February 9th from 10 to 12. Um, in between time, we are happy to schedule what we call our agenda planning meeting with our um, chairs to go over agenda items for each of those scheduled meetings. Thank you, Patrice. Any comments prior to me making some concluding remarks? Could you go to the next slide and our final slide there? Well, all I can say is this has been a long day and hopefully this has been an informative process. Please keep in mind that we all are in many stages of the growing process as far as CAB is concerned. I'm going into my third year and still have a great deal to learn. It seems like the more I'm exposed to, the more I feel like I need to learn. So let's learn and continue to grow together. We've identified some areas that CAB and each of our standing committees might want to address. And when I say we, uh, these are items that Nicole and I have looked at. This is kind of our wish list, in addition to some other things you may want to do. For policy and budget, they should further pursue or consider further pursuing the disabilities component of our recommendations. The next item, CCP might consider presenting their thoughts slash issues to CAB, and CAB would provide outside viewpoints to CCP. When CBO and county agency funds are determined and reviewed, let's strive to have CAB representation on the review board, or at least a seat at the table. Moving now to programs and services. You might wanna ask if our CBOs are ADA compliant. The next item we would like you to maybe consider, implicit bias training. You might want to consider a deeper dive into this particular area and issue. 
And then the third item you might want to consider is to ask all CAB CBOs where we provide funding to present to CAB as to their activities. And finally, OCEC might want to address maybe number one, should we have the buddy system for onboarding? Conceptually, a seasoned CAB member that can provide guidance to a new CAB member. In effect, develop a formalized onboarding system slash process similar to our ambassador toolkit. And finally, it would be kind of nice if OCEC could address, or better yet, ask ourselves, how do we minimize the revolving door of CAB members? Those were just individual standing committee thoughts. Now we would like to move to considerations for the general CAB body. And this is kind of our wish list. Use your ambassador reports as a guide to the 2023 work plans. Do we need an in-person meeting with CAB, CAB members at the six month mark, that is at the June or July uh, timeframe, a mini retreat. That would be tough, but it's something we need to look at possibly. And here's the big one. Is there too much bureaucracy in trying to get something done? And most important for us in CAB, how do we make CAB structurally sound, and we want to stress people, culture, and structure. And since we've suggested items for consideration for our standing committees and the board as a whole, it's time for possible focus areas for me and Nicole. So that means the two of us have to get to work. And here are some things that we thought we would try to address guidelines for submission to the county attorney. When I say guidelines are bylaws, we've discussed and even cussed certain of the changes. We need to get those to the county attorney and get those approved. CAB leadership should consider meeting with Essa, the chief of probations, or better yet, have her present at one of our meetings, since we are basically under her umbrella. The next item, we should discuss and hopefully plan a prison site CAB meeting in 2023. And we should take a look to work to establish future leadership. And this has to be a, much, a must. And finally, let's take a look at establishing work groups for recommendations made to CCP regarding housing, behavior health, employment, and pre-release services. We'll monitor and participate in the establishment of those groups. The aforementioned items will be sent to our standing committee chairs. If those committees do not wish to address those items, no problem. Those items are only suggestions and hopefully suggestions to help you jumpstart your committees. During the few days here, we've heard a few key phrases throughout our retreat. And those have been unity, implementation, progress, watch out for each other, community, et cetera. That's it prior to wrapping this up. Are there any comments prior to our final wrap up statement? Are there any comments, Monique? Um, yes. May we hear those, please? Um, I just wanted to give a reminder about the board, uh, Brown Act training and the ethics training. Uh, some of you have completed it, but not everyone. Thank you. Anything else? Any other comments? Okay, we're down the home stretch. So to wrap this up. Actually, I had one additional comment. Um, okay. And um, 
just a reminder to folks that the two agenda um, packets that we went through both yesterday and today, though we did not go through all of the reference documents, they are there for you um, to refer to, um, you know, on an as needed basis. A lot of that is, um, is foundational information as you go through your participation in CAB that will probably address a lot of questions you might have. So please be sure to keep them handy, save them in your file folder or what have you, um, where you can reference it again. And then I also wanna point out that on both agendas, we do have a link to the county's advisory um, body handbook. That is a, uh, the essentially a set of guidelines that govern all advisory bodies in the county. So it's probably good for you to just peruse through that um, to get um, some sense of <clears throat> your, the scope of your um, authority, if you will. Um, or the, the, the guidelines around that so you can get a clear view of what, um, what, what is expected of all of our um, advisory bodies. Um, but take a look. It actually was just recently updated, so there's really some good information in there as well. And then that in reference to our CAB operating guidelines, those guidelines are just a step further from the advisory body handbook, which gives us a little bit more um, specificity as to how CAB operates. And that's it. Thank you. That's most important. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. It's always important for oh, each Crawford, of Crawford, sorry. Scott has his hand up as well. Okay. So yeah, you asked for final comments. Um, Crawford, thank you, sir, for your leadership over the last year. Uh, it's been extraordinary and um, been something that I think all of us are better for. Um, and, you know, Patrice and Monique, you put up with us and, <laughs> and, and Patrice has a picture, her fixed picture has got a nice smile. Now there's times where I don't see that smile and I know that we've worn her down, just worn her down. But you know what? Thank you to both of them as well. And, and I see Jill Ray was still on the call. Um, Jill representing uh, her supervisor and us. Boy, thank you for that. But uh, final word, Crawford, you're, you're a great leader. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other comments? Okay. Well, it's always important for each of us to remember that we, that is the CAB board, we represent those who have a very limited voice. Going forward, let's ensure that we're worthy of their trust and let's really get to work in 2023. And maybe our model should be, let's roll. And with that, thanks to all of you, we are now adjourned. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.